Good afternoon, my name is John Melby, and we're doing Gaming with Madness today. We're showing off the Rio Grande game, Roll for the Galaxy. It's a game where we're exploring the galaxy, trying to build a better civilization than everyone else. Quickly, what's going on here is we have a dice game where we're using it to build our galactic civilization. On your turn, you take the dice you have in your cup, you roll them, you look at what tokens are on there, you pick which one of these five phases you want to execute, then everybody shows which phase they want to do, and we execute those phases. By that, we get more of our tiles out here in the galaxy and build a better civilization. It's an exploration game, takes about an hour. Some of the basic things we got in here are a whole variety of dice here in different colors. Each different color dice have different things on the side of the dice. And we've got tiles that represent the expansions we're building the galaxy. Each tile has two sides. One side with a circle is a planet, and the other side with a diamond is a development or a technology. So for the starting setup, we've got a little board here we've got. Uh, we've got a phase chart here. And as a starting setup, everybody gets five white dice. Two of them go in your cup. And then you've got an initial two tiles here, this double tile, a single tile, that may give you more things or more powers. These things happen to give him a brown dice and a yellow dice. And then you draw two tiles from the bag, put them out here, one on the development side, one on that side, and we're ready to go. Okay, so what will happen on a turn is everybody takes their dice. We've all got a little screen here, and they roll the dice behind the screen and then arrange them. And what will happen, for example, is I'll arrange these dice behind the phases that match that type of the dice. And then I take one of these and pick it to pick which phase I want to guarantee is going to happen. Uh, for example, over here on this side, I roll these dice. This is beyond a starting setup. I've already given myself some extra tools. I can pick one dice and put it up there. Once everybody's picked, we take away our player screens, reveal it, and we say what phases have been picked. So I picked the settle phase that works on planets. He picked the explore phase. And this guy also picked the explore phase. So what will happen is these two phases get executed. These two phases don't. And effectively what will happen there, if I have dice in any of these phases, like these dice, they're not any good this turn because that phase didn't happen. So they go back in the cup. We'll actually execute all our phases, do stuff. At the end, our dice will end up back here in the citizenry. And to make them useful next turn, I have to buy them from there back into my cup. So we'll talk about what that means in a second. But first, let's talk about what the different phases do for you. They're all pretty simple. The first time you play this, there's a lot of icons out here, a lot of things that you won't deal with well. but. It's very quick to pick up the icons and pick up the phases, and then you got to get used to the rhythm of the game. But the first phase, Explore, does two things. You can take a dice out of here and either get two money, or take it out of there and you draw a new tile out of the bag. And you put this tile whichever side up you want, and put it at below that stack of appropriate tiles, development tiles and planets. The next two work the same. This works on developments. If you have enough dice on this development to match its victory points, which is one, that will go out there into your empire. But we didn't do that, so nothing happens. For planets, the same thing. We take all of our planetary dice in that phase, put them out there on our tile. Ooh, now I've got four dice there. So they go back in the citizenry, and this goes out here, and something else happens. This thing says, I get another dice on the planet. The fourth phase is produce. Produce lets take, you take your dice and put them out on the planet. I've already produced on these two. And once you got dice on the planet, you're going to use the last phase and ship. And if I had a shipping dice here and that phase was active, I can take a planetary dice and a ship dice, put them back here, and I get either victory points or I get more money. Everybody does this. We kind of go, everybody does phase one, two, three, four, five, whichever ones are active, and work on that. So the game works two to five players. It's not an awful lot slower with 
five players because everybody's taking their actions pretty much simultaneously. And that's very much the way the game works. There's, when you look at the tiles, you'll find out the planetary tiles largely give you more dice and the development tiles give you more powers. The powers do all sorts of things. One of the most important things, though not the only important thing, is the ability, when you roll your dice, to rearrange them. And that means if you get a bad dice roll, if you have some of the reassigned powers, you can adjust your dice and save yourself from a bad dice roll. So, roll for the galaxy goes until one of two things happens. Somebody has to have 12 tiles down in front of them, and that at the end of that round the game will end. And remember, we started out with a single planet and then a double tile, so we started out with three, so you only get nine more tiles to end the game. The other way it ended, if somebody does a lot of shipping of goods, they get so many of these victory point tokens that you exhaust this supply of victory point tokens, the game ends. At that point, we total up points on the tiles, any victory point tokens you've got, and there are a very few six plus tiles that give you some bonus points on top of the six. Highest number of points wins the galaxy. So, Roll for the Galaxy is one of my favorite games. It's a follow-on to Tom Lehman's earlier game, Race for the Galaxy. It has two expansions, Ambition and Rivalry. And as I said, the new edition, the new printing of Roll for the Galaxy should be out shortly. There's also a board game version of this called New Frontiers. And there's a filler game called Jump Drive, which is a cut-down version of this that takes only 20 minutes. This is probably one of the most played games in my history. Uh, it's probably the second or third most game played game I have. I like the game because, while generally I don't like randomness, the dice rolls, you have enough dice that the randomness evens out, plus you have these reassigned powers that you can change the value of the dice so it's not going to hit you hard. You've got a bunch of things that you've got to be careful in the game. As I said at one point, at the end of the turn, if you had a good turn and all your dice are sitting here in the Sinister, you have to have enough money to put them back in the cup. If you don't, you don't have any dice in the cup and you're going to have a bad couple of turns getting enough money to get back in the game. At the same time, if you built all of your developments and all of your planets and you have no tiles here, the next turn there's nothing to do with your development or settle dice because there's nothing to put them on. So you can lose track of things and not get things ahead of time and lose a few turns when you can't get things out there. You've also got a, com a combination of fights here because if I sit here and say I've got a bunch of things in explore and settle phases and I go I want to do both those phases I can only pick one so you gotta look around these bozos around the table figure out what they're going to do and go ah Roy over here is abs absolutely going to pick explore so I can assume that phase is going to happen so I pick settle. And of course what's going to happen then, Roy picks something entirely differently and you're in trouble, but that's a nice little feature of the game. You're trying to outthink people, you're trying to get more resources and dice, and you're trying to do things so that a bad roll of dice doesn't slow you up too much. Altogether, this makes for a very fun game. Um, you will notice, by the way, that of the dice I have out here, this is not just the basic game dice. I've got the dice for the first expansion and called Ambition in here because we always play with those things put together. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Roll for the Galaxy. We will see you next time.